So this is from an old provincial exam question. It says, the graph of this function is shown below, and they were even kind enough to label the points for you. Oh, how nice. It's a little small on your copy. Sorry. I'm trying to save paper. Number one says, so on your test, the first half or so, maybe the first 60% is going to be multiple choice questions. I think there's about 14 multiple choice questions. Strangely, multiple choice questions in Math 12 are with 1.5 marks each. Why? Because that's what they did on the provincial. Why? Because they're stupid. But I've done that, and I'm not going to, since this is the last year that Principles of Math 12 is running as the current course, I'm not going to suddenly change and go to the more sensible one mark for multiple choice, because that would skew your grades compared to all my other students that have come here in the past. So anyways, for some reason, multiple choice is worth 1.5 marks apiece. Then in this final 40%, I'm going to give you some kind of generic shape, some f of x, and I'm going to give you a bunch of transformations. So here is great practice. Tell me what's going on here. It says on the graph provided, sketch this graph. What's going on here? List the transformations in the proper order. What do you see? Andrew, what do you see here in number one? What does this here mean? Okay, let's write that down. Bert x3, uh-huh, 2, right. You guys want to try it on your own? I'll do it up here and let's see if we end up with the same thing. Or I can walk through it. You know what? Most of you nodded and said you wanted to try it on your own. I'll freeze the screen. Try this yourself. So vertically expand your heights by 3 and then to right. Screen is frozen. So negative 4, negative over there. And I ended up with that. And if you're wondering how long it should take you, you should be done in about another 20 seconds. If you're not, you're going to have a tough time finishing the test if I'm trying to pace things. In fact, you should have really been done sooner than that. Okay. Is that okay? Holly, we're good. Nod your head. Happy joy. I would consider this Holly... C plus level question, okay? It's got two transformations. I think uh, C level questions are where the transformations where there's two just with slides, because I think the slides you guys, oh, counting, looks like that, you know, the parabola, I, the stretches are a bit trickier. I agree. Okay. Question number two. Okay, sketch the reciprocal of this. Steph, is that okay? You looking a little question mark? Are you good? We're good? Question number two. Sketch. Now that's the reciprocal. That is not the inverse. That's the reciprocal. Inverse is that stupid little negative one. Switch the x and y around. Reciprocal means take the reciprocal of the heights. Oh, okay. What was our procedure for reciprocal? Maybe we'll write this down. The first thing that we did was we looked for what I called the invariant points. Which numbers were their own reciprocals? Okay, plus or minus one high. So let's go back to my original graph. You know what? Right there and right there, right there and right there are going to be invariant. Then the second thing I looked for was vertical asymptotes. And where did the vertical asymptotes occur? Anywhere that we were how high? Zero high. 
And Ryan, if you're zero high, what you really are is an X intercept. I've scrolled down. What's the X intercept, Ryan, on my original graph? Okay, so there's going to be a vertical asymptote. Uh, I'll do it. No, black is dumb. Mr. Do it. Do it in red so it stands out. There's going to be a vertical asymptote right there. And then I said to you, we use our Sesame Street imagination. We pretend we're a little bug. I'll start out standing on this point right here, this positive one. As I move to my left, what's my original graph? Oh, hang on, write this down. Three. Bug. Bigger becomes smaller. And smaller becomes bigger. I'll show that with two arrows pointing in either direction. And we remembered a few specifics. Cassandra remembered when they would shoot off to infinity or, or, or let, let's see. As I move to my left, Trevor, what's my original graph doing? If I recall, is it getting closer and closer to zero? You guys have it in front of you, but I've scrolled down. It's my original graph as I move to the left right from here, getting closer to zero. So what's it what's the reciprocal gonna do? Shoot off to infinity. Now, I just lost the mark. Look up. We're fussy when we're drawing these. If you touch an asymptote with your graph, that's a no-no. And can you see I just ran into an asymptote? So when you're drawing these, be a little bit careful. You get closer and closer, but you never touch an asymptote. You can with the arrowhead. That's not part of the actual graph. I do have to put an arrowhead there because it's shooting off to infinity. As I move to my left, as I move to my left, Trevor, what's the graph doing? Getting bigger or getting smaller? The original one. Is it? I don't know. If you have the graph in front of you, I don't. The original one is getting smaller. The, ori the original one, the original graph is getting closer to zero? Ah, okay. For, uh, oh. I apologize, Trevor. You're right. And you clearly haven't watched the videos in there. Ah, busted. Okay, let's move over to, no, he was late. Let's move over to Tyson. Tyson, my original graph, it, as I move this way, I think it's getting a little bit bigger, yes? But not very much bigger, in fact. What's the highest it gets? Is it? What's the highest it gets? Two. So what's the lowest I'm going to get? What's the reciprocal of two? A half? And does it keep going forever and ever and ever, or does it stop right there? It's not meant to be a trick question. It's meant to be really easy. Does this graph keep going forever and ever, or did they put a big dot there to show that it stops? It stops. My reciprocal is going to stop as well. My reciprocal is going to go to positive 4 and quit. In fact, it's going to do this. At positive 4, you told me I'm going to be a half high. It's going to curve, it's going to, it's going to stop right there though. It's not going to go any further because my original graph does not go any further. A number of you have asked me, what are there arrows? What are there not? There's arrows if you keep going. There's no arrows if you don't keep going. The textbook, instead of arrows, what it does is it goes right to the edge of the graph. I'm guessing that's the software that they use to create those graphs. But arrows, please. Let's do the left side. Steph, I think if I stand right here and I move to my right, my original graph is getting closer to zero but negative, yes? So shoot off to infinity but negative. And as I move to my left, my original graph is getting further from zero. In fact, I think it hits four, negative two. Is that right? What's the reciprocal of a height of negative two? Got to be fussy, not negative one over two. In other words, it's going to end up right there. It's going to curve closer and closer there. And it's going to stop there because the original graph came to a stop there. Now, if the original graph had arrows and suddenly leveled out, well, then I would continue this way with arrows and that way with arrows, but the original one does not. There's reciprocal. You're much more likely to get something like number... Th well, I'm going to give you a reciprocal graph. Probably be worth three marks. Usually I give one mark for the invariant points, one mark for the asymptotes, and one mark for the shape. 
Number three. Well, a little alarm bell going off here. Why is there a little alarm bell going off here? What's wrong with this question? What don't I like about this question? Well, the x is be that I don't mind, but it's the x is being multiplied. There's a coefficient and there's a slide, but this slide is not in brackets next to the x all by itself. It hasn't been factored. Mr. Duick, yes. What does that really mean? This one here, if you don't factor it, the correct order changes. The correct order, if you don't factor it, is actually do slides first, then expansions, comp compression, then reflections. You can memorize a second order, Cassandra. I just memorize, I always want things factored. I always want things factored. So I'm going to rewrite this as y equals negative 2 f of. I'm going to factor out a negative 2. And what would I have left behind in the brackets here? An x. Thank you, Captain Obvious. More specific. What about right here? A plus 2, because negative 2 times positive 2 is negative 4. We're foiling it in reverse. We're factoring, which is foil in reverse, or front door bomber, or distribution, whatever your teacher called it, in reverse. Now I'm going to make my list. Expansions, compressions. Let's walk through this one. Sabrina, do you see any expansions, compressions? What? What's this one? Did you say vertical? Okay. By two or by a half? You're correct. Your throat's sore? Me too. Vert x2. With authority, because you're right. It's a vertical expansion by two. Not a vertical expansion by two. Okay. Uh, ooh, 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 ooh. What's this one? I totally agree. By two or by a half? And how can you remember? You're right. Say it louder with authority. By a half. And it's a compression since it's by a half. How do you know? It's next to the x where it belongs. It's backwards. That's vertical. If it was vertical and backwards, it would be on this side. Since it's not on this side, it's no longer backwards. Right? Good. Expansions, reflections. Check. We've done those. What did we do after expansions, compressions? Reflections, negatives. I see two there and there. I see vert, reflection. By the way, a vertical reflection is about which axis. If I flip something vertically, it's about which axis. The x-axis, because everything's backward. In other words, sometimes on a multiple choice, they'll say, which of the following is a reflection about the x-axis? And you have to clue in. That's a vertical reflection. It's got a negative in the front. I just don't like writing that because x-axis confuses me. Vertical, I know that means up becomes down and down becomes up. Uh, there's a horizontal reflection. Uh, two left, one down. Right? Good. Try this one on your own. Go back to the original. I'll see if I can do it here. Boom, boom. Boom, good, yeah, decimal, oh well. Yep, yep. Yep. Boom, boom, yep, yep. Expansion, compression, reflection, reflection, two left, one down. Expansion, compression, reflection, reflection, two left, one down.
I think I end up with that weird thing. So you, you do end up with a couple of points hovering in midair, yes? But they're nice decimals. They're halves, not like one-seventh or something creepy, so I'm, I'm okay with that. If it was like a one-thirteenth, I'd get a bit nervous and think I'd made a mistake somewhere. I think he goes through, through zero, three. I think you go through negative four, negative five on the end points. Is that double checking? People nodding or no? People still going. Okay, Jessica's nodding. You also go through negative two, negative one, and then you got those two little half points hanging in midair. Okay. This one had six transformations. I would consider this a B plus level question. The plus comes from the fact that you had to factor it. If it didn't have to factor it, if I gave it to you factored already, it's a B-level question. It's a higher order, it's a tougher question. How many got that? Okay. Only a few. Maybe I went too fast. See where you zigged if you didn't get it? Okay. Let's try another one. Turn the page. Now, we're supposed to sketch the absolute value of the function, but you've all just turned the page. So what I'd like you to do, first of all, is lightly sketch the original. The original goes through there, 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 and there. Just do it with a little dotted line. And that's what I'll do on your test. The original graph will be there as a dotted line for you. It'll be a, like a gray dotted line. Now. What's this transformation here? What's that mean? Sketch y equals, what do those two vertical lines mean? Touchdown? No, that's sports. What do I do for the absolute value? Steph liked that joke. Oh, get used to them. Steph, what do I do for absolute value? It was actually, I thought, one of the easier ones. Anything above the x-axis remained fancy word, invariant. So I would take out my pen and I would trace over this, really, or pencil, trace over that. and say That's going to stay where it is. Anything below the x-axis is going to fold right up. In fact, I think it's going to look like this. Junk, junk. You get kind of a sort of a seagully shape thingy. Right? Sort of this. Kinda. If I could draw, which I really can't. Okay. To me, absolute value, yeah, I'll throw one on your test. It'll probably be a little two marker. To me, that's about a CC plus. Like it's say hey, fold the bottom half up. Ah, but now we have in number five absolute value with a twist. Once again, let's quickly sketch the original, which goes through here, here, and here. It goes through there, 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 and there. Sketch it as a dotted line. Remember I said yesterday on your quiz, if you do it as a solid line, I have to assume that that's part of your final answer. There was one of you, either in this class or my other class, who used different colors for each step. That is acceptable, but you may run out of colors, and it clutters up your graph. What do you think this means here? Well, what two transformations do you see here? What's that mean? One up. What's this mean? Which one do I do first? I'll give you a hint. Look at number five and look at number six and see if you can figure out the difference because I think number six also has a one-up and an absolute value, yes? Which one do I do first? In terms of the order of operations, absolute value you treat like brackets, like bed mass. In number six, is the plus one inside the absolute value? I would do that first because it's inside the brackets, like bed mass. Here is the plus one inside the absolute value. No, I'll absolute value first and then one up. In fact, it's going to be number four moved one up. Now, I'll walk you through it. I would go like this. This one stays where it is. I'll change colors. This one stays where it is, one up. 
This one stays where it is, one up. This point stays where it is, one up. This arm is going to look like that. This point here, I would take the absolute value first. I would take the absolute value so it ends up there, and then one up. Connect them. This point here, I would take the absolute value so it end up at positive 2. And then one up. Dope. Connect them. There's absolute value with a twist. What about number six? Okay. This is one up and then absolute value. Once again, let's just quickly sketch our original. Okay. Here, I'll go point by point. This one here says one up, dunk, then absolute value. What's the absolute value of negative one height? Positive. It's going to end up right there. This point here says one up, then absolute value. What's the absolute value of zero? Oh, I'll wait. It looks like I lost a few. I see erasers being pulled out. Question, Amanda? Ask. It's a good question. For me? Is the plus one inside the brackets next to the x? That would be one left. The plus one is after the function. It's one up, then absolute value. That makes sense? So let's do this next point with me. Ready? Look up. This would say one up. Boom. And then absolute value. What's the absolute value of a height of zero? Zero. Zero with authority. Yeah. Look, this is kind of weird. It's going to connect right there. Let's do this point next. One up. And then what's the absolute value of a height of one? One. Good morning. Good morning. Just give me a moment here. Continue. So this point here, Amanda... How high is it right now? One, one up, and then absolute value. Oh, what's the absolute value of two? That's going to stay where it is once I move it one up. This would move one up, an absolute value. So this is a bit of a strange one. It goes from being a symmetrical graph to being this kind of weird, funky thing. But that's OK. There's absolute value with a twist. What's the order? You do what's inside the absolute value first, Kirsten. It acts like a bracket. It's not a reflection, expansion, compression. There you have to just think it depends on how it's written. Number seven. Reciprocal with a twist. How do I know reciprocal? Because f of x is on the bottom. But what else do you see going here? What's that? Well... Vertical or horizontal? And how do you know without having to think about it? If it was horizontal, where would it be? Is it inside there next to the x? So it's vertical. In fact, we have a vertical expansion by 2. What about this negative, vertical or horizontal? And how do I know without thinking about it? If it was horizontal, where would that negative be? If it was horizontal, where would that negative be? Inside the x. So it's also a vertical reflection but it looks like before they did that they did that they took the reciprocal and then vertical expansion by two and a negative once again let's sketch our original graph because otherwise this one's going to be really tricky so I'm going to very lightly put a little X right there, but not with the big thick felt, Mr. Duick. The thin felt. Dope. Little X right there. Little X there. Little X there. Little X there. Little X. In fact, well, okay, I'll do the dotted lines. I almost find the dotted lines get in the way, just the key points are what I'm going to move. All right. 
first thing we're going to do is the reciprocal. Ready? I would start with this invariant point right here. It would stay invariant. Ah, but what are my next two transformations? What are the next two things that we listed? We wrote them down. They're not on my screen. You have to read them to me. What are the next two things that we listed? Okay, so instead of one high, two high, and that invariant one high ends up right there. What about this invariant down here? Well, vertical expansion by two, da -dum. vertical reflection, da -dum. it ends up there. Will this point move at all here? Zero, zero, it's going to still be the vertical asymptote. How do you know? Because if I, well, first of all, let's draw it in. If I vertically expand that asymptote by two, isn't it still just a vertical asymptote? And Kirsten, if I flip it, isn't it still just a vertical asymptote? So it's going to be, it's going to stay where it is. Okay. As I start back here, as I walk to my left, I'm getting closer to zero. Normally, I would shoot off to infinity. If I vertically expand that, I'm going to shoot off to infinity faster. If I reflect it, though, I'm not going to shoot off to positive infinity. Where will I shoot off to? If I reflect it, I'm not going to shoot off to positive infinity. Where will I shoot off to? Cassandra. Thank you for playing. Now, I can't really tell if you're shooting off to infinity faster or not. It's very difficult for me on the shooting off to infinity to mark a vertical expansion by two. In fact, I wouldn't even look for it. What I look, would look for is did the ones, the invariants move? Now, as I move to the right, the highest I got was two. What's the reciprocal of two? A half. Don't put your pencil down, though. Hover it, hover it, hover it. Then vertically expand that by two. If I vertically expand a half by two, where will I end up at? One. Reflect it. Ah, I'm going to curve towards that. You see how we can't put all this together? It's tougher. By the way, this would be an A minus or maybe an e A question. Reciprocals with a twist are considered higher order. These are tough. Is that okay? Let's try it on the left-hand side. So we moved this point. As I move closer, Katie, I'm getting closer to zero. So the reciprocal of closer to zero shooting off to negative infinity. Vertical expansion would shoot off to negative infinity even faster. I can't really draw that. Ah, but vertical reflection, instead of shooting off to negative infinity, I'm going to shoot off to positive infinity. Now look at what I just drew. Look up. On the provincial, you might lose a half mark for what I just drew because it's starting to look like I'm curving back. I was kind of sloppy. Can you see I started to tilt a little bit away? So I'm going to redraw that, and I'm going to make sure that they can see that I know that it gets closer and closer to the asymptote. They are fussy. I marked this question one year, and they were that fussy. The odds are I wouldn't catch that, but I'll show you the correct method. Okay? Could you do me a favor, Tyson? Could you shut those doors at the end of the hallway? They're doing the drama class in there. Okay, Nicole, let's do this one. I would reciprocal, so it would end up a half high, but negative. If I vertically expand negative a half, where will I end up? One, reflect. Oh, it's going to end up there. So, you know what? Reciprocal with a twist? We can, we can get it. I think. We can get it. All right. Number eight. Number eight says the graph of y equals f of x is shown below. Sketch the graph of y equals 1 over f of x directly on the same grid. This used to be worth five marks. It's not worth that anymore because kids got too good at it. This was the very first year that this current course of Math 12 came into existence. I think it was in 2002. So... 
you know what? Try this on your own. This is a reciprocal graph. I'm absolutely going to give you one of these. Try this on your own. I'll do it up here. Let's see if we end up with the same thing. Reciprocals. Remember the three steps. Invariance, asymptotes, and then bigger becomes smaller, smaller becomes bigger. Okay, I'll talk you through it. Ready? So if you have trouble, I'll talk you through it. First thing I said, anywhere one high, and that part you just have to memorize, Shannon. Oh, and anywhere negative one high. But by the way, that would get you one mark out of three because you'd have the invariant points, correct? So you're not going to get zero. Oh, and anywhere zero high, asymptote. Anywhere zero high, asymptote. You okay with that? All right. Then I did my bug trick. I started out here and I said, as I move left, my original graph's getting bigger. Reciprocal is going to curve closer to zero. In fact, I could even exaggerate that a bit more and do a better graph. Closer to zero. Is that okay? As I move right, this little tiny chunk right here, this little chunk right here, it's getting closer to zero. What's that going to turn into? What's the reciprocal of getting closer to zero? Shoot off to infinity. Okay. Stand right here. As I move left, this little chunk right here, getting closer to zero, you just told me it's going to shoot off to infinity, correct? Now, as I move this way, I'm getting higher. So I'll get smaller. What's the highest I get right there? What's the reciprocal of two? What's the reciprocal? What's the reciprocal of 2? That point there, Shannon, is going to end up right there. So I said, oh, it's going to curve closer to that. And also this guy is going to curve closer to that in that direction. Okay? Then what I did was as I move to the right, it gets close. It shoots off to infinity. Sorry, that was mean of me. Okay? Standing here again. Now I'm in the negative area though, right? So... Closer to zero but negative, shoots off to infinity but negative, yes. Further from zero but negative, closer to zero but negative. It's going to look like that. If you get the hang of reciprocals, it actually becomes fairly step by step. But I recognize it's a tricky concept. How many of you got that on your own? Okay. Woohoo! One more reciprocal. Okay. Isabel, you had a question? Because it's a good, if you have it, probably someone else does. No, we're good? Figured it out? Okay. Yeah, he's not as dumb as he looks. Sorry, that came out wrong. Number nine. Yet another reciprocal. Okay. What's the first thing I'm going to do, Shannon? Darn right. One high there, one high there, one high there. Well, negative one high there, negative one high there. What's the second thing I'm going to do? Uh, going to be an asymptote right there and a vertical asymptote right there. And it looks like I've divided this graph into a bunch of sections. Let's start here. 
Um, to the right is kind of easy. We've done that one so much. Closer to zero. Shoots off to infinity. Now, to the left, I'm getting further from zero. I'm going to get closer. But I do level out. How high am I right here, Shannon? What's the reciprocal of negative two? Yes, it is. All you're doing is flipping it, right? The sign stays the same. You just... It's really negative 2 over 1, psh, negative 1 over 2. And because this height is negative a half, and 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 this height is negative a half, really what I would be looking for would be a horizontal line, and you could freehand it. I'll use a ruler, though. I'd be looking for a, that horizontal line becomes a horizontal line. And I think it would curve like that. It would be getting closer to that. Why didn't I put an arrow on the end here? Because my original graph stops there too. And I, I went right to there and quit. Don't you dare go one further because the original graph doesn't exist there. There's no reciprocal height there. Um, I think this Shannon is almost identical to the previous one, but we were down, you know what? It's going to go further from zero, further from zero, two high, one half high. It's going to do that. In fact, it is an identical shape to the previous graph. Here, further from zero, closer to zero but too high, so we're going to end up with a horizontal line coming to a stop like that. This one would be an interesting one to do, this graph, but with a two right there. Because then instead of a half high, you know what this horizontal line would end up as? Negative one high and negative one high. It'd be it'd be easier to draw almost actually because you're not having to freehand in midair. I don't know. It'd be a vertical stretch by factor of two. Next one. Okay. Absolute value with a twist. I see three things. I see absolute value. Yes. I see a 2 in front of an x. Is that horizontal or vertical? Horizontal by a half or by 2? By a half. I see horizontal compression by a half. And I see a plus 1. That's going to be 1. Okay, what's the correct order? Yeah. Yes, compression. Uh, horizontal. Compression by a half. Absolute value. 1 up. You treat the absolute value like it was a bracket, and you do good old bed mass. What's inside the brackets first? So, let's try a few of these. I'll do this point here, starting at negative 6. Horizontally compressed by a half. So instead of negative 6 to the left, where will it end up? Negative 3 to the left. Absolute value, what's its height right now? Negative 2, what's the absolute value of negative 2? 2, and then 1 up. You know what? That point ends up there. I think the next point I would do would be this negative 4. I'd skip the negative 5 because it's uh, compressing it by a half is going to give me a decimal. But this one here that's negative 4 left, compress it. It's going to end up at negative 2. Absolute value, positive 2, 1 up. Oh, you know what? It's going to give me a horror. Those guys are the same height. They end up the same height. I think the next point Tyson I would do would be this guy. Carson. Compress it by a half. So instead of two left, how far will it be? One left. Absolute value. Instead of negative two down, it'll be and. Okay. What would be another good point to pick? Zero, zero. Horizontally compress it by a half, nothing. Absolute value, nothing. One up, right there. How much you want to bet it does that. I think I would pick 2-2. Two, two. Horizontally compress, 1-2. Two. 
absolute value stays where it is, one up. What would be another smart point to pick? Four zero, compress two zero, absolute value, nothing. One up. What would be another smart point to pick? How about six negative two? Compress. Absolute value. One up. Oh, it's weird. Suddenly it goes shooting back up there. And then I would also do eight negative two. Compress, negative four, absolute value, one up. That W shape surprised me. I did not see that coming out of here at all. When you have absolute value with a twist, it's much more difficult. You don't keep the same shape. Often you'll get different corners appearing that weren't there before. Is that okay? Good. Thank you. Happy joy. Good. Let's keep going. So much fun. I'm getting this. This is all like, oh, all the weird ones, but they're making sense now, Mr. Duick. I'm not going to do number 11, but can you tell me if they asked you this, what would you do? What two transformations are going on here? Reciprocal and one-up. Which one's first? I'm looking at this. Is the plus one in the bottom of the reciprocal? I think I'd do that first. If they wanted me to do reciprocal first and then one-up, they would write it this way. That's reciprocal. Uh, well, make that look like a one. That's reciprocal and then one-up. I think this one would be one-up and then reciprocal. Come here. It would be a bit interesting because this line here and this line here, when they're raised one up, would be at negative one. They would become completely invariant lines. I would probably really lightly sketch the whole graph one up and then take the reciprocal of that. But I want to do more. So there's number 11. You can try that if you're bored. I don't have an answer key for this, though. Let's look at some multiple choice questions. If a comma b is a point on y equals f of x, determine a point on that there. Okay. What does this mean? What does this mean? What does this mean? Three up. So if I have a comma b, when I move to right, how do I calculate that? What do I actually do to this particular coordinate? Well, I'll give you a hint. It's one of those two. Which is correct? Do I plus 2 or do I minus 2 to go to right? I plus 2 on the graph. It's minus 2 in the function. It's plus 2 on the graph. It's so I would do that and that right away. What about to go three up? Do I minus three or do I plus three? Let's see. Okay. Number 13. Two functions are graphed below the original. And this one here, where it looks like they've done a horizontal stretch or shrink and a horizontal slide. Now, Glance at your answers, first of all, for A. They haven't done a stretch or a shrink. What have they really done for A? It's a reflection or not. Can you tell me? Look at this. Look at this. Has it been reflected or not? Hopefully you can see. Absolutely, because this little thing was on the right. Now it's on the left. That means those two are wrong. You want to get in the habit on multiple choice questions. You always look at the answers right away. Always. Especially in math. You can almost always process of elimination. Even if you don't know what to do now, now you've turned it into a true-false question because there's only two answers to guess from. you got a 50-50 chance of guessing right. Always look at the multiple-choice answers. They tell you a lot. Okay. 
So they would have reflected it. This negative 4 would have ended up at a positive 4 right there. But I notice it actually ended up right there. See it? So did it get moved to left or to right? To left. Okay. So if we move it to left, that means it must be that. To left. So here's the question. Careful now. Careful now. What would I put in for B so that I ended up with an X plus 2? The fact that there's a minus sitting there means I actually want to put in for B a negative 2 because that would give me a minus minus, which is what, Carson? A plus. A lot of kids on this one said, oh, it's 2 left, B is negative, uh, sorry, it's, it's 2 left, B is 2 because plus 2. They did that. Well, no, they got a minus there, sneaky beggars. And I want a plus 2. B must be a negative 2, so I get a minus minus, which is a plus. It's, uh, that's wrong. It's the correct, A is the correct answer. Tricky question, sneaky question. Number 14. How many questions did I put on this review? Can someone tell me? What's the last question number? Sorry? 21? Okay, thank you. Just trying to pace myself here. Okay. Whenever they want me to find an equation, like in number 14, Shannon, I always fall back to my listing the replacements. So if I reflect in the y-axis, now the y-axis is this one. If I reflect in the y-axis, oh, my chair's not working. Oh, no. It's a little higher. Oh, there we go. If I reflect in the y-axis, this is a vertical or a horizontal reflection. If I reflect in the y-axis, replace what with what? Let's write that down. Replace x with negative x. Now, a lot of students picked b. You're going to see in just a second that b is incorrect. Because if I actually do the replacements, I'll get this. I would cross this out. It's not a reciprocal. I would cross this out. It's not an inverse. How do you know that's an inverse? Because I'm pretty sure they switched the x and y's around. Now, I don't see that. Oh, they simplified. They got rid of brackets. It's a, what's a negative cubed? So this would simplify to a negative in front. Ah, but what's a negative squared? Here, for this second one, the negative vanishes. A lot of students picked this one because they said, oh, you replaced all the x's with negatives. No, 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 no. You replace all the x's with negative x's, but you have to then do the mathematical operation. Turns out the correct answer is A. Number 15. Which of these represents a reflection of the graph of y, of that thing, if you reflect in the y-axis? So reflecting in the y-axis, is that a horizontal or a vertical reflection? It's my favorite. It's horizontal. <laughs> So we're replacing x with negative x. It's going to be 5 minus negative x equals 2y squared plus y. What's the correct answer? By the way, I would have said, that's wrong. They switched the x and y around. Well, inverse. Inverse is a reflection. What line does the inverse reflect about? Do you remember? Ooh, might want to know that. It's line y equals x. It reflects about the line y equals x. So it was a, oh, yeah. 16. I guarantee on your test, I'm going to give you a question where I give you a point and give you a transformation and say, what's the new coordinates? And the way to handle that is, first of all, make your list. So what's going on here in the correct order, please? What have they done first? What have they done first? I disagree. 
I think they've done absolute value first because there's nothing else in the brackets. So it's going to be absolute value. That's the first thing they did. Then what did they do? Now we'll go in the correct order, Andrew. Vertical expansion by three. Then what? One up. And the way I tend to do these, once I've made my list, Sabrina, is I write the point nice and big. And I'm just going to cross numbers out and work my way outwards in either direction. In other words, I would say absolute value. That's going to become a six. Vertical expansion. That's going to become an 18. One up. That's going to become a 19. If there had been anything horizontal, I would have just continued working this way. If there had been a horizontal, th I didn't see a horizontal thing. Is negative 319 an option to pick? There it is. By the way, one of these would also be if you did three exp vertical expansion by three first and then absolute value. Is that okay, Steph? So I'm going to give you one where I give you a point and an equation. I find doing it this way and just working your way outwards, crossing out the numbers as you go, easiest way. Least amount of work, but most amount of checking your answer. Okay. Which equation? Oh, they want me to find an equation? I'm going to go replacements. After it's compressed horizontally by a factor of a half, horizontally means I'm replacing x. By a factor of a half, I'm replacing x with what? 2x. Look up. That's wrong and that's wrong, because here they replaced x with a half x and a half x. There, I just got rid of half my wrong answers. Even if I don't know anything else, I can guess that I got a 50-50 chance. Then, translated four units right, replace x with what? x minus 4. So in function notation, it would look like this. y equals f of 2x, and then that would become y equals f of 2. Replace the x with an x minus 4. Do you see that answer there anywhere? Do you? Which one? I don't see it there blatantly. I got to do a bit of right. It's uh, B is close, but not. What did they do? Oh, they got rid of brackets. And if you get rid of brackets, what is two bracket x minus four the same as? Ah, those sneaky beggars. A. They wrote it in the way that I don't like it. They're allowed to. Number 18, if negative 6, 12 is a point on y equals f of x, what must be a point on that monstrosity? Okay. Hmm. Ah! Alarm bell. Do you see it? Do you see it? Do you see it? I first of all, Kirsten, need to rewrite this. This here needs to become y equals, I'm okay with the negative a half, I'm okay with the f, I'm okay with the negative 2, I don't like that. I need to rewrite this as x, uh, what would go here, so with a negative 2 there, I'd get a positive 6 there. Minus 3, so when I foil it out, I'm good. Normally, I'd make a list. We're running out of... Let's see if we can do this in the correct order without actually writing the list, just by writing the point. So the original point is negative 6, 12. Expansion compressions, what do you see? What's this do? Vertical or horizontal? Why? Uh, by a half or by two? That 12 is going to become a 6. What's this do? Vertical or horizontal? Horizontal by a half or by two? By a half, that negative six is going to become a negative three. 
Reflections. Oh. Vertical reflection. This six is going to become a what? I'll just put a little negative in front of it. Woohoo! Oh, reflections. This three is going to become a what? Dunk. Three what? Right? So instead of positive three, where will we be? Positive six if we move three right. Right? Five what? Five down. So instead of negative six, negative 11. This will end up at six comma negative 11. Six comma. There's my new point. So we can do them mathematically without a graph paper, or if we have graph paper, we can do the hover pencil method. Gonna make it? I know I've been talking. Is this helping? I hope though. It's it, I, I. I figured this is my weird questions day. Um, if x comma y is a point on that, what must be a point on that? Ah! No. Okay, so in Math 12, how can we take an easier topic and make it tougher? They love to give you a question with, instead of numbers, they'll just put algebraic variables in there. They'll put algebraic variables in there. Look up. Vertical expansion by W. Right? horizontal compression by 1 over V. If there was a 3 there, it'd be 1 third. If there was a 2 there, it'd be 1 over 2. If there's a V there, it's 1 over V. I'm not going to freak out. I'm going to deal with this. M right. Right? And K Jeff says, looks like you wrote Mr. Right, Mr. Newick, and that's who I'm dreaming of. Oh, no, relax. <laughs> so here is the point x comma y. By the way, this would be considered an A minus level quite. This is tough. Um, vertically expand by W, what would I do to that y coordinate with whatever number was there? Multiply it. So I'm going to just write W times Y. Horizontally compressed by 1 over V. I think compressing, it's the same as dividing X by V. That's your horizontal compression. Right? If it was 1 half, you're really dividing by 2. If it was 1 third, you're really dividing by 3. M right. X over V plus M. K up. WY plus K. You want the coordinates? The coordinates of this point would be X over V plus M, comma, WY plus Okay, now if you stop and think about it, Ryan, I didn't do a single new thing there. I thought outside of the box I was stubborn and clever. But if they give me letters, it's, it's got to be the same rules. I'll be a bit more paranoid, a bit more careful. I've got to follow the same rules. I like that question. I like that question. I like that question. It's a great drink bottle, but it squeaks. Don't ask me why, but it works great. Number 20. Number 20. Given that, find that. Oh, what does that stupid symbol mean? Reciprocal? Oh no, what does that little negative one mean? How do I find an inverse? 
first thing I would do is I would go, oh, okay, x equals 2y plus 1 over 3y. Oh, I like this question. I like this question. I like this question. This is a nice question. Didn't say it was going to be on the test. Apparently, you're a good student who just notices those things. I'm not done. I need to get the y by itself. Well, I got fractions. What grade 8 mathematical operation could I pull out of my back pocket that would make this much nicer? I can cross multiply because technically this is over 1. So if I cross multiply, I'll get 3xy equals 2y plus 1. Now I want to get the y's by itself. Problem. If I get this y by itself, I'll have this y sitting on the other side. If I get this y by itself, I'll have this y sitting on the other side. Solution. Get all the y's to the same side first. I'm going to minus 2y from both sides, okay? I'll get 3xy minus 2y equals 1. How many y's do I have on the left there? 2. How many would I prefer? One, it would be wonderful if there was some grade 9 mathematical operation that I could pull out of my back pocket that would help me turn that monstrosity from two y's into one y. And there is. I can factor. Really? Yeah. And you know what the first thing that I always, 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 always look for when I factor? GCF. There is one. What is the greatest common factor on the left-hand side there? Because I asked you to. What is the greatest common factor on the left-hand side there? Why? Because I asked you to. I'll never get tired of that joke ever! Amanda, what is the greatest common factor on the left-hand side? If I factor a y out, I'll have a 3x minus 2 left behind, yes? Katie, how many y's do I have on the left-hand side now? Oh, can I get the y by itself? Sure, there's a big bracket next to it. What's the y doing to that great big bracket mathematically? Timesing, so how would I move that great big bracket over? Divide. Turns out, this question is math 8 and math 9. Turns out, kids leave this question and freak out and don't know what to do, and it drives me crazy! y ends up being 1 over 3x minus 2. That's the inverse of the original equation. Okay. Math 8, math 9, math 12. I like number 21. I like number 21. I like number 21. It says, if the range of my original function is that between negative 8 and positive 6. You know what? Did they tell me what the original function was? Say no. I'm going to draw the simplest possible example. I'm going to draw a graph, and I'm going to go... There's negative 8, there's positive 6, there's the range. It might have squiggles and curves, and I don't care. I'm just trying to visualize. I made a little slanty line. There. What's the range of that? What's going on here? What's going on here? Oh, are you saying this is a vertical expansion by 2? Now, is the word range also vertical? Ah, so will a vertical expansion affect the range? Yeah. How? I think it's going to be negative 16 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 12. This would double and that would double. Yes? And everything in between would also double, and since they were all connected originally, ask. Because I'm stupid. Oh, 
and I missed my why because I <sighs> missed out on an opportunity. Thank you, Amanda. Candy for you later. Okay. Is that okay? The really nasty one are B, C, D, and E. But I'm not going to get to those right now. I'm going to talk about those. Can you remind me next class? So I'm going to stop the lesson because here's your homework.